Demand for lithium has never been stronger, with Goldman Sachs calling it the new gasoline, suggesting demand could triple by 2025. That's according to a quote on the Cornish Lithium website. The privately held Cornish Lithium is a mineral exploration and development company focused in on the environmentally sustainable extraction of lithium from geothermal brines in the historic mining district of Cornwall. Its founder and chief executive is Jeremy Rathel, who joins us now here in the studio. It's good to talk to you, Jeremy. Thanks indeed for, for dropping here. by. Thank in fact, you. it's a good moment because you've just updated uh, uh, shareholders. I say you're privately um, uh, owned onto you, but they you are. do have shareholders. And you've just updated yeah. um, uh, those interested on, on your website. We have. Um, and it's, this drilling campaign it all sounds very exciting. So you're going for going for more opportunity. We are. We are. We, so we've just completed our first test hole, which was um, very much a scientific endeavour to see mm -hmm. if we could actually do this, and whether there were lithium-enriched brines deep in the ground as we suspected from historical records. We've confirmed that there are. We've confirmed that they. Uh, in fact, there's probably m much, much more than we expected. Anyone who wants to read that, it's on our website on our news tab. So that full, read that update. Um, uh, if they wish to. But it, it, it really exciting times and we're actually in discussions with a, a couple of potentially commercial uh, partners for that. Mm. Uh, just, just to just to um, give us a little bit of history. I think what you've been—is it four years now? Cornish Lithium has been around. Yep, absolutely. Four years. Uh, in in that time, what have you been doing to lead you up to this point? Well, we started off. Um, the very early days, just assembling all the historical data that we could, and there's an enormous amount. We've got something like 50,000 historical mine records and data, then compiling that into a three-dimensional um, model, yeah, using some very innovative software from New Zealand of all places, um, because they do a lot of geothermal energy there already, so we could take that software and use it in Cornwall. And then once we could uh, incorporated all that data we could then plan our drilling campaign very very accurately um, to, to to be able to hit the structures we believed would were, ho were hosting this uh, lithium enriched brine and indeed sure enough we, we did and um, but the important thing is we hit a lot more structures than we expected and so we carried on our drill campaign right down to 1.1 kilometers rather than stopping at 800 meters so really exciting time so it, it's been a, an iterative journey uh, of building data and then proving it up using modern uh, drilling techniques. What about the, 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 the brine when you take it out and you've got your lithium within this solution presumably, yep. then what happens to it? You take it off to a processing plant? You, well yes, I mean we'd probably put a processing plant on site right. um, and what it would use is, is what's called a direct lithium extraction or DLE as it's become known, which uh, very interestingly Bill Gates and his Breakthrough Energy Ventures f um, Foundation just funded exactly that technology in the US, a company called Lilac Solutions last week so really it's extremely topical um, we may well talk to those people we may well talk to others but we're having a discussion with a number of potential partners who can extract that lithium directly from the brine. Mm. My understanding is having spoken to you um, off camera is that um, there is also the potential for lithium uh, within the major rock um, structures within Cornwall which yeah. I think many will know is mo mostly granite isn't yeah, it? it is. Um, is that Re realistic possibility as well? Well it's really interesting because the lithium, the, so the granite underneath Cornwall extends all the way from the Scilly Isles all the way to Dartmoor so it's underlying most of Cornwall. It's an en heavily enriched in lithium. It's known to be the largest granite, uh, lithium enriched granite in the whole of Europe. Um, scientific papers to prove that and really we are looking for areas where it's super enriched and we, there was a mine operating in the Sinostal region during the war, extracting lithium uh, for submarine air conditioning. We are fortunate enough to have that mine on some of the mineral rights that we have an agreement on, and we're actually drilling that at the moment to evaluate whether that could also be uh, a source of lithium. And the, the techniques to extract that are also being rapidly developed around the world. So we believe it's an exciting time uh, for both the brine and potentially for the hard rock. Mm. Just remind us, why lithium? I mean, we have spoken actually on another interview about this, uh, and you, you have uh, given us some detail. But just remind us what the importance is about lithium, because it is a, a metal that we're talking more and more about. I a think mineral we're talking more. Yeah, about. exactly. I, I think the importance of lithium is that it really is the one metal which can facilitate the transaction or the transition to a low carbon, zero carbon, because the the move to low carbon depends entirely on the ability of to be able to store power in a battery. So if you generate when, um, renewable power from the wind or solar, it has to be stored because it doesn't always, the wind doesn't always blow and it goes dark at night. So 
if you can store that in a battery, like an electric vehicle or a battery in your house, that uh, facilitates that transition. The one element which is essential in those batteries is lithium, and that's why it's so important that it is the one metal that facilitates uh, the, the, the transition. Mm. Um, talk a little bit about where the company's going. Uh, you, as I say, you're privately owned at the moment. Yep. Um, what's the, the share structure? Because you do have shareholders on board, private shareholders, don't you? We do. We, we, we originally raised money with a, a group of high net worth uh, shareholders, all of whom were mining with a mining background who knew the risks that they were taking on. Of course, any new company is a risky uh, company. So. And then we last year we raised money through crowdfunding through Crowdcube, which was en enormously successful. We were delighted with the results. We raised 1.4 million pounds, and that's brought us in over 1,200 new shareholders, right from people who put in 10 pounds because they wanted to be part of it, mm. right up to people who put in a lot, lot more than that. Um, so you know that's the way the company's going. We will eventually have to raise more money. Will you do it the same way? I mean, that's obviously proved a very successful way, of, and presumably relatively inexpensive. Well, it, it, it's very cost-effective. Let's put it that way. Mm. And and we were delighted with the, the results. So we probably would go crowdfunding again um, through Crowdcube, which did a, they did a great job. And um, how would people hear about this? Um, um, good question. <laughs> um, probably through Crowdcube, we've got a very, very large network of people who they advertise to, you know, ad opportunities to through Crowdcube, through um, our website, and through direct emails and contacts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's, let's, let's take a look at the, the big picture and the demand and supply for, for lithium because that is obviously critical to the success ultimately of the business. Yeah. Ultimately, also you want to sell it exactly. into the market. Exactly. Um, what about um, the demand and supply? Um, really interesting, at the moment what happened was because it, the lithium price went sky high in 2017-18, it stimulated a lot of new capacity to come on stream, which is quite interesting that most of it came from Australia, it was hard rock, it was you know literally mining, but most of that production has to be shipped all the way to China and then processed using high carbon coal gas mm, mm. so it's not the most environmentally friendly route but anyway we are in oversupply at the moment for certain grades of lithium for battery grade lithium or battery quality lithium the price still remains very robust uh, particularly in Japan and Korea but for the Chinese price has been really really challenged I think we're going to come out of that oversupply in the next year or so um, because the it, global acceptance of electric vehicles is growing, particularly you know when Tesla is now I think probably the biggest yeah. car yeah. company in the in the world, yeah. a huge uh, increase in sales, and uh, we really are heading into a, a battery revolution. And in, in fact, the British government have mandated the um, that we won't be able to buy petrol and diesel cars from 2035 now. Day, mm. so really that that transition is accelerating. Demand for lithium is going to rise, and we hope. Uh, not only that we'll be selling into a market which is undersupplied, but also that the market will differentiate between low carbon sources and high carbon sources, mm -hmm. and that's already happening. Yeah. Um, uh, as, as we speak, um, we're going through the coronavirus. How much of an impact has that already had to the demand and supply, and could it have as we look from this point? Um, yeah. it, I mean, we're, we're seeing a pretty much a, a relatively um, uh, big lockdown in China and we're getting news of other countries as well locked down. Let's assume that it does get a little bit worse than where we are at the moment. Yeah. Does it have an impact on prices of rare earths and minerals generally and it, lithium? It certainly does. I mean it's a two-edged sword. There's, there's two aspects of the coronavirus. One is that it just really crimp demand because lots of people are staying indoors and not buying a car. So that, that's bad and that will exacerbate the oversupply and probably I, I would imagine prices will maybe fall or stabilize. But the other thing is that it's focusing people's attention onto the supply chain. Mm -hmm. So can we rely in the UK, Europe on an economy which has been paralyzed by the coronavirus and you know we, we are reliant on, on China for our lithium supplies at the moment. Is that acceptable? I don't think it is. We've really got to think about our own domestic supplies. Europe, in fact, uh, the EU is way ahead of the UK on that. They're throwing an enormous amount of money into the supply chain, trying to stimulate a domestic supply of lithium in Europe, um, throwing, I think, three billion euros on that situation. So really, the UK government, I think, needs to think about that very hard. But yeah. coronavirus has been an interesting one because it's crystallised a lot of people's minds, focused a lot of people's minds. Yeah. Uh, back on Cornish Lithium, where are you going to be at the end of the year? 
Good question. Um, by the end of the year, we will have finished both of our drilling programs. We, in fact, we've finished them very, very quickly. Um, we will be continuing to talk to potential joint venture partners about the commercialization of both those um, technology and both those opportunities. <coughs> and I think uh, hopefully we'll have a test plant on site uh, at our first drill site by the end of this year. I think that's a very realistic possibility. So we could actually be extracting small amounts, but uh, real bits of Cornish lithium. One final question is, is that I think we already know that you have aspirations to be a fully listed company. Is yeah. that still on the horizon? Uh, we, we said to shareholders who came in for the crowdfunding, obviously at the moment they can't sell. Because we have EIS, they probably don't want to anyway because of the tax benefits. But we said obviously we need liquidity so people can realise their investments. And we said that we would um, look towards a listing within three years. So that was from August last year. Um, three years time I think we have tried to run the company as if it was a listed company already anyway our accounts are disclosed on companies house our shareholder updates are regularly disclosed on our website we're working with companies like SRK for our um, technical work to try and do everything to the highest possible standard with the aim of eventually listing. Mm. Oh, interesting story, but thanks indeed for dropping by and it's good to hear about the update. Tell us Jeremy Rathall, he's the Chief Executive and Founder of Cornish Lithium.